Hello girls, we're at Cannon Beach, the same beach that Holland and Mary came to with us, and we're here to read you today a book about Albert Einstein called On a Beam of Light. Over 100 years ago, as the stars swirled in the sky, as the earth circled the sun, as the March winds blew through a little town by a river, a baby boy was born. His parents named him Albert. Albert turned one year old and didn't say a word. Albert turned two and didn't say a word. Albert turned three and hardly said a word at all. He just looked around with his big curious eyes, looked and wondered, looked and wondered. So different, but so dear. His parents worried little Albert was so different. Was there something wrong? But he was their baby, so they loved him no matter what. One day, when Albert was sick in bed, his father brought him a compass, a small round case with a magnetic needle inside. No matter which way Albert turned the compass, the needle always pointed north. As if held by an invisible hand, Albert was so amazed, his body trembled. Suddenly, he knew there were mysteries in the world, hidden and silent, unknown, and unseen. He wanted more than anything to understand those mysteries. Albert started asking questions. Questions at home, questions at school. So many questions that some of his teachers told him he was a disruption in, in class. They said he would never amount to anything unless he learned to behave like all the other students. But Albert didn't want to be like the other students. He wanted to discover the hidden mysteries of the world. One day, as Albert was zipping through the countryside on his bicycle, he looked up at the beams of sunlight speeding from the sun to the earth. He wondered, what would it be like to ride one of those beams? And in his mind, right then and there, Albert was no longer on his bicycle, no longer on the country road, he was racing through space on a beam of light. It was the biggest, most exciting thought Albert had ever had, and it filled his mind with questions. Albert began to read and study. He read about light and sound, about heat and magnesium, and mag magnetism, and about gravity, the invisible force that pulls us down toward our planet and keeps the moon from floating away into outer space. Magnetism, gravity, light, sound. And he read about numbers. Albert loved numbers. They were like a secret language for figuring things out. But all that reading still didn't answer all of Albert's questions, so he kept on reading, wondering, and learning. When Albert graduated from college, he wanted to teach the subjects he loved. All the things he had read about all those years. But Albert couldn't find a job as a teacher, so he got another job. A simple, quiet job in a government office, an office where he worked with other people's ideas and inventions. He did his work very well and very quickly, so quickly that he had lots of time to study, lots of time to think and wonder. Albert watched a lump of sugar dissolve and dis disappear in his hot tea. How could this happen? He watched the smoke from his pipe swirl and disappear into the air. How could one thing disappear into another? Then he began to figure it out. He thought about the idea that everything is made of teeny, tiny, moving bits of stuff. Far too tiny to see. Little bits called atoms. Some people didn't believe that atoms existed. But Albert's figuring helped prove that Everything in the world is made of atoms, even sugar and tea, even smoke and air, even Albert and you. Even this book is made of atoms. All right, that's the end of part one about Albert Einstein. We're going to read some more in just a minute.